Ngayong hapon, kanatang kanan. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the better half of our secretary of Minda, Mumbai Alonso. Earlier today, we were filled with vital inputs on uh, federalism. At this point, let us uh, federate our ideas as well as perceptions related to the draft um, federal constitution with the end view of uh, achieving a good blend of framework and provision which uh, hopefully will work for the development of the Filipino society. We have uh, the lone speaker, kasi hindi pwede dalawang drug, isa lang. <laughs> and uh, two discussions. Our speaker for the session is currently the executive director of the PDP Laban, uh, Federation, uh, Federalism Institute. Sorry. A political think tank established by Senate President Coco Pimentel. He has written uh, some books related to Philippine government and he just recently released Federalism 101, a primer on the shift to federal system of government. Let us welcome Mr. Jonathan Malaya. Can we remove the general manager of NHA in an election? 
no big enough. Who is the boss of the NHA general manager? The president. Can we remove the president simply on the basis of Yolanda? Of course not. And that will have problem ng Pangulo. We cannot remove. So there is no accountability when a project is done by the by the uh, federal government or by the national government on something that directly affects the people of Tagalogon. Tanawin ko po kayo ngayon, sino po ang meron ng uh, uh, driver's license na plastic? That is why if we were in a federal government, driver's licenses can be issued on a regional basis. Kung mag-collapse man ang meeting sa Manila, magka-fail road meeting man sa Manila, kayo dito sa Sambuanga, pwede kayong mag-building, pwede kayong magka-driver's license. This is just one of the many examples na pwede kong i-share ngayon, but I'm not really here to talk about federalism per se. <laughs> I'm here to talk about the proposed amendments to the Constitution. Now, napakabigat po nung binigay sa akin topic ng uh, Mindanao Development Authority because this is so broad. How many minutes do I have? 25. So I'll do what I can to be able to explain. The draft Philippine Constitution has been submitted to Senate President Coco Pimentel. It has also been submitted to uh, Speaker Bebo Alvarez and will soon be submitted to President Duterte. However, I am sharing it to you now because we would like to be inclusive. We would like everyone to have um, ownership of this draft. So if you have any comments, I'd be happy to hear them. Baka po maihabol pa natin. Because uh, once this is filed, it will go to uh, the Committee on Policy Amendments in the House of Representatives. Anyway, pwede naman pong ihabol doon. Mahaba-haba pa naman ng proseso nito. This is a long process. But before I go there, let me just make three principles clear. Number one, as mentioned by the previous speakers, there is no one-size-fit-all model of federalism. Sinabi po kanina yan ni uh, Professor Bileno na katanayin ng Davao University. That is correct. Walang one size fit all. Ibig pong sabihin, we have this opportunity to design our own federal system. We cannot say, ah kasi ganito sa Amerika, kailangan ganito rin sa Pilipinas. Hindi po. Wala pong isang model lang. Number two, uh, the context of our federalism is different. We are not the typical coming together federal model. Yung coming together federalism po, yan yung mga dati ng hiwa-hiwalay at independent na nagsama. Gaya po na Amerika, Australia, Germany, Malaysia, mga dati-dati na po yan nagsama. Our context is different. We are a holding together federalism. Isa na po tayong state and we would like to create some national units. What does this imply? This principle po is this. We do not need an entirely new constitution. Okay? Yung iba po kasi ang gusto nila, palitan lahat ang uh, buong ating konstitusyon mula sa preamble hanggang sa transitory provisions. Ang posisyon po ng PDT laban is, for constitutional continuity, we should only amend the 1987 constitution. In fact, there are many good provisions in the 1987 constitution that hindi na po natin kailangan galawin. So you will not find me discussing changes in the Bill of Rights, in suffrage, in uh, uh, doon lang po sa mga bagay na makakabuti sa buhay ng ating mga kababayan. For example po, may mga nagsasuggest, palit, palitan na po natin ang pangalan ng ating bansa. Ang flag daw po natin, dahil Luzon centric, yung, yung eight ways of the sun daw po ay Luzon lahat, kailangan daw po gawing once para po ma-reflect yung 11 rays of the sun, 11 federal states of the proposed federal republic. Ang sagot ko naman po sa kanila, gaganda ba ang buhay ng taong bayan kung papalitan natin ang pangalan ng ating bansa? Makakaaral na ba ang mga mahihirap o makakakain na ba ng tatlong beses sa isang araw kung magalagay ako ng additional race in the sun? Hindi po. So, ang approach po namin ay surgical. Yun lang po mga provisions in the Constitution that will enshrine federalism and empower development and put the conditions that will make federalism succeed should be there. With that, let me proceed. Okay, general provisions po. We are establishing a federal republic under a semi-presidential system. Semi-presidential po is like semi-parliamentary. And I will explain to you the distinction later. We will not be a unicameral uh, 
legislature, we will have a bicameral legislature. We will still have a Senate, but the Senate will be secondary to the Parliament. Bali pa ang po, our Parliament will have two chambers. Okay, the, the first chamber is the Federal Assembly, the second chamber is the Senate. Okay? And we will have regional governments. Jadi ipat na lang po ako dahil hindi ako makagalaw dito. Pwede pa hindi ng microphone. semi-presidential system or a hybrid parliamentary system we are not going to have uh, we are going to retain the president okay but we will still have but we will have a prime minister siguro ang tanong nyo ano magiging trabaho nung what will be the difference between the other one and the other one the president will be the head of state the prime minister will be the head of government Okay. The president will be the only official in the land who will be elected nationally. Because mamay na po, ipapaliwanag ko sa inyo that our centers will now be elected by region. To ensure that Mindanao and the other areas in the country get the same number of senators as the other regions in the country. So, our president cannot just be from anywhere. Yung ating pong Pangulo, hindi pwedeng, gaya yung sinabi kanina na, gusto ko maging presidente, Artista naman ako, gagawa ko ng sarili kong partido, tatakbo ako. For a person to run for president, he must have the support or he should be nominated by at least 20% members of the Federal Assembly. Okay? Ang ibig kong sabihin yan, we will only have at most 3 to 4 candidates for president. And the president can, will serve for a 5-year term for a maximum of 2 terms. Now, the president is different from the prime minister. The prime minister is the day-to-day -day running of the government. Ang presidente po natin na magiging tungkulin, limitado lang. No? It will be the prime minister now who will be who will take charge of running the government on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, who gets to appoint the prime minister? He is nominated and with the consent of the federal assembly appointed by the president. Para po yung sistema natin ngayon sa mga secretaries. Nag-nominate ang presidente and with the consent of the uh, Federal Assembly is appointed by the president. Now, the Prime Minister may be removed at any time at for a vote of no confidence by the Federal Assembly. Ganyan po kadalasan sa mga parliamentary system sa mundo. So kung ayaw po natin yung Prime Minister, hindi na tayo kailangan mag-people power. It will be easier to change the leadership of parliament through the vote of no confidence by the members of the Federal Assembly. Now, the, the president as we, as we know now is different from the president at, that is being proposed. Kadalasan po, sinasabi sa amin, kung magpa-parliamentary na tayo, bakit pa tayo magkakaroon ng presidente? Pag parliamentary po kasi, meron tinatawag na head of state. Kung familiar po kayo sa uh, British Parliament, for example, meron po silang Prime Minister, si Theresa May. Ang kanilang head of state po ay ang Queen of England, or si Queen Elizabeth. Ganun din po yan sa Malaysia. No? They have a rotating uh, king from among the sultans, and then they have a Prime Minister. However, ito pong ating Presidente, since nationally elected siya, he will exercise the sovereign powers of the state. What are those? National defense and foreign affairs. Yun na lang po ang magiging trabaho niya. National defense and foreign affairs. Yung mga pang-araw-araw po mga request sa pondo, yung uh, request sa presidential social fund, wala na po sa Presidente yan. Ibibigay po natin yan sa Prime Minister. Therefore, the President is now insulated from everyday politicking. He will now become a symbol of the nation. He will be an elder statesman. Para kung nagkakagulo yung mga politiko natin sa parliament, ang presidente po ang 
masisiguro na tuloy-tuloy ang trabaho ng ating bansa. Ngayon, meron pa rin po siyang veto powers. He appoints members of the judiciary. He, uh, kailangan po yung prime minister kakampi niya. Kaya siya ang nag-nominate ng prime minister. At kung sakali nung po ang gulo-gulo talaga ng mga congressman natin, he can dissolve parliament and call for new elections. Hindi na po kailangan ng people power, hindi na po kailangan ng food ita, mas ipapilis po ang pagpapago ng gobyerno natin. Okay. Ang Prime Minister naman po is responsible for the program of government. Therefore, yung pang-araw-araw na trabaho, sa kanya po lahat yan. The domestic policy, economic policy, sa kanya po lahat yan. He sets a domestic agenda, he runs the day-to-day -day affairs of government, at sa kanya rin po manggagaling ang mga kabinete. And he prepares the budget and submits to the Federal Assembly. Okay. Let me go into detail into the Parliament. Paano po ang Parliament natin? Sa Senado po, we propose three senators. Pwede po natin bawasan. Gawin natin two. Kung gusto, gusto tayo magpanggal ng mga senador. But they will now be elected by region. They will serve for five years. How about the Federal Assembly? We're introducing something new. We're introducing the proportional representation. Ito po yung papalit sa party list. Okay? Di po ba ang uh, ating Pangulo ay nagsabi na kailangan tanggalin na natin ang party list system? Okay? So instead of uh, doing away completely with the party list system, we are going to reserve 40% of the members of Congress to proportional representation. Okay? Okay. Paano naman po ang Senado? Magpapago na rin po ang Senado. Under our present system of government, ano po ang power ng House, yun din po ang power ng Senado. So every bill has to go to the Senate and it has to go to the House before it can be approved. Di po ba? If it's not approved by either chamber, it does not become law. Now, we are going to change the nature of the Senate to make it as a chamber to represent the regions and it will only exercise consent legislation. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Pag meron pong bill, kailangan po one reading na lang sa Senado. Hindi na po three readings. Kasi po duplication po kasi ang nangyayari. Okay? So no need for three readings in the Senate and the Senate cannot initiate legislation. Hindi po pwede mag-propose ng batas ang mga senador. Manggagaling na po yan sa House or sa Federal Assembly. Tuloy-tuloy tuloy pa rin po yung ibang mga trabaho ng Senado. Confirms appointments made by the President and Prime Minister except when nominee is a member of Parliament, impeachment court, and approved treaties and international agreements. Karamihan po sa uh, tungkulin in terms of legislation since we are turning to a semi parliamentary, hybrid parliamentary will now be with the Federal Assembly or the House of Representatives as we call it today. Alright. In terms of the judiciary, hindi pa po nagkakasundo ang mga abogado kung paano natin gagalawin ang judiciary. Madami po nagsasabi na magkaroon tayo ng state supreme courts. Okay? Ang problema po kasi namin dyan, magastos po. No? Magastos, komplikado. Okay? So, at the moment, the, the PDP laban is prepared to propose the following. Appellate courts in the regions. Kasi po, madalas, pag hindi kayo nat nat natuwa sa desisyon ng RTC, pupunta ka po kayo sa Court of Appeals. Nasaan po ang Court of Appeals? Nasa Maynila, nasa Cebu, nasa Kagendi Oro. Pag, nag, pag nagkaroon po tayo ng federalism, we will have a division of the Court of Appeals in every region of the country. So, hindi na po kayo pupunta ng Manila kung gusto nyo mag-file ng apila. Pangalawa, tatanggalin na po natin yung Judicial and Bar Council. Because the JVC is the one that uh, uh, vets the members of the judiciary. Nagkagaling po sa JVC yung tatlong pangalan na sinasabit sa Presidente para ma-appoint kayo bilang membro ng Hudikatura. Ang mga yari po niyan, magkakaroon na po ng hearings sa Senado. Ang Senado na po ang gagawa ng shortlist para po buong Pilipinas ay nakapagbigay ng input dun sa mga members of the judiciary. 
Ngayon po, na-discuss po kanina, may na-discuss about the Constitutional Court. Pinag-aaralan pa po ng mga dalubhasa kung kailangan ba natin ng Constitutional Court. Kasi po, madalas pong problema sa ibang bansa, the jurisdiction of the, court, of the Supreme Court and the Constitutional Court, they clash. Okay, they clash. Pwede pong mangyari na the Supreme Court decides this way and the Constitutional Court decides this way. So, kailangan po very clear kung ano ba yung trabaho ng Constitutional Court. And at this time, we are not yet prepared to propose that. Anyway, mahaba-haba pa naman po itong lalakarin natin sa federalism. Kung sakasakali mang pagkasundo na mga abogado for a Constitutional Court, we can always insert a Constitutional Court for our country. Alright? Now, ito po yung importante about federalism naman. The federal government, of course, will exercise general supervision over the executive, legislative, and judicial branches of government. As mentioned by Dr. Manasan a while ago, uh, so, and we are so happy to hear, ma'am, that you have uh, already identified some of the powers and the possible uh, expenditures that come with those powers. Ito po yung mga bagay na pwedeng maging kumpuli ng national government or federal government under a federal system. National defense, police, foreign affairs, currency, customs, postal service, madami ba po yan? Of course, someone would say, police. Doon kay Dr. Manasa, nilagay niyo yung police as a regional or state function. Mahaba ako ang debate pa po yan. Kasi po nung araw, yung police is a local function. Nung until uh, si Marcos yung pinag-isa niya. Naalala niyo po ba yung ano? PC? Naalala yung PC? Tapos yung INP? Opo, yung Metrocom under INP yan. Yung polis po dati hawak ng mayor. Inintegrate ni Marcos. Why? Because some of the some of the police were being used as private armies of local politicians. So, although sa Amerika po talaga, tsaka sa Australia, ang police po talaga is a state function. But of course, as I said, there is no one size fits all. We can decide as a country. Ganito ba natin ibibigay yan? So, at present, ang posisyon po ng PDP naman, national na muna. Habang hindi pa tayo handa na ibigay yung power over the police to the regional governments. Alright? Next. Okay, ano po yung mga principles that uh, Oh, came into the uh, crafting of this federal system. Of course, autonomy. This has been discussed extensively. Subsidiarity. Solidarity. We would, would like to clarify, hindi po dahil magkakaroon tayo ng regional governments or yung tinatawag din ng federal states, eh maghihiwalay-hiwalay na po tayo. Hindi na tayo magtutulong. Uh, may mga nagpo-propose ko, for example, sa pa ayong Palawan, gusto nilang maging humiwalay bilang uh, kasi meron na daw silang pera, meron daw silang malampaya at yung uh, proceeds daw ng malampaya sa kanila lang daw gagamitin hindi po ganun ang federalism <laughs> kung, kung makadiscover po ng ginto sa lugar nyo hindi po pwede sa inyo na lang share po natin yan sa ibang lugar that is solidarity in a federal system wala pong federal system na walang solidarity so solidarity, decentralization, democracy and accountability. Ito po yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina. If it's the national government, how do you make the national government accountable? Di ba? Project Kalsada sa sa barangay ay sa sa munisipyo namin. Ang gumawa ng ng Kalsada DPWH. Pwede ko bang tang, pwede ko bang tanggalin yung regional director ng DPWH dahil sa substandard na Kalsada ang ginawa niya? Hindi ko magagawa 'yon. Para kung si mayor ang gumawa noon or si governor ang gumawa noon magiging issue sa eleksyon. At pwede siyang matanggal dahil sa substandard na project na yun. Okay. Uh, wala pong magagalaw sa mga local governments. Okay, so yung mga taga-local government dito, wala kayong problema. Okay? We will maintain the levels of government as we have and just add the regions. Okay, so yung mga probinsya, munisipyo, lungsod, barangay, and the autonomous regions, okay, will remain. So, if kagad-agad, the autonomous regions are already a region under the proposed federal system. Asymmetric po. 
Kung ano man po ang kalalabasan ng peace agreement, yun po ang ilalagay natin sa Constitution. Okay? So we will, we, we have taken into consideration the Pansamoro question here. We are not going to make any presumptions that we know the solution to that problem. So we are going to wait for the result of the Pansamoro question of the, and then we will discuss it. Now, ito pong nasa kaliwa, yan yung po yung proposal ni Tatay Nene. Hindi po yan final. Okay? Kaya huwag po mag-aalala yung mga mga iba na sabihin. Southern Mindanao, ang laki. Isang region lang yan. So, yan po ay subject to discussion pa lang. We, we are only coming out with it para masimulan yung discussion. Ganyan din po yung reaction ng mga taga-Bagyo. I was in Baguio two weeks ago, pinakita ko yan. Sir, ba't wala kami? Ba't kasama namin region 1, region 2? Kasi po, ang gusto po sana ni Senator Nene Pimentel is uh, the larger the region, the more money. The larger the tax base. However, it's not only money that we're talking about. We're also talking about political considerations, cultural considerations, and anything that permits. Okay? Ayan. Yan, yan po yung mga iba. The rest are going to be shared powers. Tama po si uh, uh, Dr. Rose na better siguro gamitin na natin yung word of shared. Tama. Kasi itong concurrent, kasi parang that's the present system right now eh. I think share. So, I agree with what she said that a possible system would be if DepEd, minimum standards, minimum curriculum, textbooks can be identified on the level of the federal government, on the level of the regional government, uh, infrastructure, school buildings, hiring of teachers, and augmentation of the curriculum. So yung kaya kanina, nung minention kanina na Mindanao History, eh, itatagan nyo in your place. Basta you comply with national minimum standards. The role of the national government will be to make the minimum standards. You can add to it to enrich your curriculum and your level. Now, questions have been raised. Paano yung mga state universities and colleges? Lahat ba yan may bibigay na sa regional government? That's subject to discussion. Pwede po yung mga big uh, big uh, state universities and colleges, those that cater to national development goals like UP, Technological University of the Philippines, Mindanao State University, yung malalaki po, University of Science, can be retained with the state government, uh, with the federal. Pero yung mga maliliit, kaya ng Sosobon State Polytechnic College, Cabal Research State Polytechnic College, Pasilan State, ibibigay na po natin yan sa region. Okay, ganyan po. There is no one size fits all, so we can discuss this by sector. Now, kalina po may tanong, what are the steps by steps towards a federal system? Matagal po na yung pinag-isipan po mga kasama. Kasi po, federalism will impact on all agencies of government. It will also impact on, it will also impact on many laws. And many of these laws will have to be amended the National Internal Revenue Code, the Local Government Code, and many, many more laws. No? Kasi po, ang takbo po ng utak ng gobyerno natin ngayon is unitary. Kahit po yung Procurement Act. The Procurement Act is unitary. Okay? The, 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 ang hirap po mag-create ng PAC kung walang approval with the Central Government. Secretary po ang nag-appoint niyan. So, all of these laws will have to be amended. Now, how do we see the transition? Ito po. If the people approve the federal system in 2019 in a plebiscite, immediately within 18 months, Congress must pass the regional and local government code. Habang wala pa pong regional and local government code, yun munang local government code natin ngayon ang mag -apply. The regional and local government code will first provide for the interim regional government. What is the interim regional government? The regional commission. Ano po yung regional commission? Baka po nandun sa next slide ko. Okay. Pero bago ko po, ito muna. The regional local government code will. Kasi po, the constitution can only contain the principles and the major uh, functions. It cannot detail everything in the constitution. Pag ginawa po natin yun, we will have the longest constitution in the world. Okay? So, gagawin po natin, the details will have to be passed by Parliament. Wala naman po pwede ibang gumawa nun eh, except Parliament. So, the Regional Local Government Code 
We we'll define the powers of the regional government, define accountabilities, define how regional governments will be funded. Yung pinag-uusapan po kanina na sharing of taxation, dito po ilalagay yun. Consistent with the provisions of the Constitution on sharing of wealth. Okay? And provides the organizational structure of the regional commission. It will also create the equalization fund and the creation of a national finance commission. Kanina po may tanong, how do you operationalize the equalization transfers? Magkakaroon po tayo ng National Finance Commission. Yan po ang mag-uusap. Saan idadali ng pera ng, uh, ng gobyerno? Hindi po parliament ang gagawa kasi ang parliament po kasi politiko na kaupo doon. We're going to give it to technocrats. We're going to give it to finance experts and they will recommend to parliament how to divide the money. Ito po. Kaya na po ang sinabi ni Dr. Rose, magastos ang shift to Federal Reserve. Totoo po yan. Sabi ko, may cost. Sige, sige. Sabi niya, may cost. And nung tininan po namin yung, totoo nga, may cost nga. Magastos talaga. And of course, ang change is magastos. Wala namang, there's nothing that's free in this world. Diba? So, napag-isipan po namin to mitigate the cost, huwag muna tayo kaagad mag full-fledged regional government. We first go through an interim uh, system, which is the Regional Commission. Ano po yung Regional Commission? The Regional Commission is the governors of the provinces, the mayors of the highly urbanized cities, and the mayors of the independent component cities We're, are going to form a provincial body called a Regional Commission. Rotating pong chairmanship nila. RDC. Para RDC. We are going to build on the existing. We will not. We are not going to create something from out of nowhere. Okay. Pero this will be limited to the governors and the mayors. Nayon. Bakit po namin nagkusto ang tong na regional commission? Kasi po, for example, sa Bicol, where I am from, sabi ng mga taga Maspate, siguro ato ang magiging governor sa amin yung mga taga Albay, yung mga taga Kabalinesu. Pero under the regional commission. Uwo po as chairman yung mas pati, katanduanes, even Biliran, even Pasinan, even the small provinces can become part of a, of a commission wherein the chairmanship is rotating. Sila muna po yung magiging regional government. They will exercise the powers of the regional government. Pag ginawa po natin ito, wala tayong pasweldo. Kasi sa sweldo na sila, di sweldo na sila. Sumisweldo na sila as governor at mayor. Okay? Tapos, wala tayong masyadang pasulado and very lean. Very lean po ang ating regional government. Now, we will let some 5 to 10 years pass. If after 5 to 10 years, they feel that they're strong enough, then they can prepare their own organic act. And they will submit their organic act to parliament for approval. Once approved, doon na magkakaroon ng federal government phase 2. Kung gusto nila mag-elect ng regional governor, then they let them do it. Kung gusto nilang regional assembly na may mga let them do it. But at the beginning, huwag muna po tayo masyadong magastos. Alright. So, uh, hindi ko na mali-discuss yung mga pinaka-importante parts. <laughs> I will skip fiscal, fiscal federalism. Just give me one minute. We realize that shifting to federalism without electoral and political reforms will be a problem. Therefore, PDP Laban is prepared to push for this. Okay? Ngayon po, I cannot promise you na pagkating sa kumbeso, aaprobahan ito. But as a political party, we are making a stand. Our stand is, we should strengthen political parties, number one. Number two, we should prohibit political turncoats. Ano, ano pong ibig sabihin ito? Pag kayo ay politiko, tumakbo kayo under liberal party, sabihin na natin. You cannot transfer to another party one year after and one year before the election. Pag lumipat po kayo, tanggal kayo sa pwesto. Okay? And PDP Laban is prepared to fight for this. Okay. Number two, we are prepared to push for subsidy for political parties. Karamihan po ng mga parties sa ibang bansa, they receive uh, subsidy from their government. Tayo po wala. That is why ang mga politiko natin, laging nagpapalakas sa negosyante, sa mga oligarchs kasi panggasto sa eleksyon. Kung hindi, ibibenta niya yung kanyang kalabaw at yung kanyang lupain tapos mababangkarote siya. We should have some form of political subsidy based on electoral performance. The more seats you get, the more money you get. 
And finally, we are prepared, no, wala. We are prepared to push for an anti-political dynasty law. Now, in this, instead of a law, we are going to put it in the Constitution. Okay? Talongin nyo na lang pa ako mamaya ko ano yung detalye para masagot ko. Self-executory self na may provision kung anong klase ang prohibited up to what degree kung second or third or fourth degree of constituent or affinity at ano yung bawal, succession or successive or ano, I, I will just, uh, discuss. I, I, will, I will already skip the economic provisions and I will also skip the federalism as a current bargain. Maraming maraming dami salamat po for your kind of President and Chairperson of the Board of the Centrist Democratic Political Institute. He was the Chairperson of the Board and President of the Technical Assistance Center for the Development of Rural and Urban Poor, an NGO based in Davao City that serves largely on the in the communities of Southern Mindanao. Our discussion turned his Masters in Public Administration in Harvard University. He had served as a top executive since the administration of President Cory Aquino, President Ramos, President Estrada, President Arroyo, and of course under the Duterte administration, of which he served as in various capacities and in a private sector, we also hold several positions like as a corporate board mem member of the different corporations. He is also a consultant of the World Bank and some USA projects. Let us welcome our discussant, the prime mover of the citizens' movement for federal Philippines, Mr. Lito Monico. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor. I hope to see you tonight. 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 I hope to see you very good presentation, as expected. He's one of the young people I have always admired, and I've looked at his uh, career, so to speak. Because he's very articulate, and one of those that he supported uh, the uh, Conrad Adorno Foundation, of which I am a part of, supported, and we sent him to Germany last uh, three months ago. Huh? Now, uh, the PTP law of the Constitution is a competently a well crafted uh, document. I must say the least. Uh, right now there are at least three or four draft constitutions being presented to the uh, House of Representatives, but one of them is really the PDP Laban. I'm very proud of it because I am part of the crafting of this. Also, we tend to come and tell since 1967. I think a lot of you were not born by then. So from 1967, when Emmett and I were, uh, were uh, recruited by Raul Manglapos, we came out first with the parliamentary 
back of an academicism. And now this is the crux of the thing now. So I will refer to only one that is in contrast to some of the positions given by, uh, by the PDP Laban. This is basically also uh, the position which was taken during the time of the uh, The 2005 Consultative Commission was a commission which was uh, <coughs> established by uh, former, G former, G uh, former President GMA, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, in 2005, where, uh, where my, myself headed it. And so it took uh, several months, in almost a year, trying to craft the Constitution. And this is the Constitution I present to you in contrast to PDP Laban. But I tell you now, almost 90%, in fact, 95 or 95% of the 2005 Constitutional Commission and the PDP Laban uh, are the same. In fact, we borrow from each other. You know? So, but I will, I will instead point to you the uh, different, different, uh, the difference here which is very important, right? by way of contrast. So by way of contrast, we have the PDP Laban here, which we have since presented already. We have a simultaneous federal presidential system, or they call it a semi-presidential system. When I say simultaneous, because they want to simultaneously do it at the same time, the federal and parliamentary. Second is that, they have the press, we have the bi governor group, which was expect, uh, which was represented, uh, which was already expect, uh, explained, the House of Representatives, or the Federal Assembly, which we also agree, by the way. And they have, however, the uh, House or the Senate. Our, our position in the CDP, which is also the Lacan's position in the CDP, in the 2000 position is, we have a shift to the parliamentary government forces. The first shift is before federalism, is to have the shift to parliamentary government through charter change by the year 2022, when the president steps down. Then, we have the federal system to be put in place from 2022 to 2028 and beyond. So you see, there's a difference from 2022 to 2028 and beyond after the after the war. Okay. Now we have a bi bicameral and we have a unicameral. The reason why we wanted a unicameral is over the years, over the 50 years that we have, there has always been a clash between the Senate and Congress. The Senate and Congress, and they have so many gridlocks. As a matter of fact, there are, you can, the Congressional, Dr. Meron, for example, can look at the Congressional, uh, there are close to about 40% where you clash. Gridlock. Whereas in most federal system, when you have only one, headed by one, the uh, prime minister, there is no red okay? And in Congress also, the PDP Laban position, we cannot do that in 57 months. That means towards 2022. So, we, we, our position is that it will take more than, more than that. So, I mean the position there is from 2022 to 2028 is the federalizing process. Okay. Now, uh, so we have practically the same. Uh, the PDP Laban and the CDP, uh, Prime Minister, the head of government, the cabinet recruited from among the members of the parliament, 
all the proper prevents or investment. These are all the same. Okay? The president, the head of state, elected from among, however, this is the difference. We don't like the president to be elected universally. For the simple reason. The presidential election is one of the deadliest and the most expensive election in the Philippines. The source of traditional politics and the source of which the entry of the oligarchy to control the levers of power. That's why we do not want a universal election for the presidency of the Federal Assembly. That's one of the key differences between the PDP and the CDP position. But once the president is elected for five years, also the same, he ceases to become a member of any party. And like the Queen of England, reigns over all. And he is also commander-in-chief with all the powers vested on him, the same as the uh, PDP. And I don't know how many guys is this government election. You know, in the Philippines, you know how, the, how much they have to spend for a presidential election? Billions. Not only that. No, we're not talking about billions. Billions, not only that. This is the source of temptation for traditional politics where the local people will again say, ah, sigo, ikaw ng presidente, ano na lang kami dyan, ako gusto mo pa, etc., etc., etc. And that is also, as I said, the entry point for the oligarchy to control political power because we know already that he who controls political power controls economic power. So these are some of the differences. Now, having said that, having said that, we the, the next thing to do is, therefore, to amend the Constitution. And we have the President. We sent the President, in fact, a memo, June of last year, with Raul Maglaawa, Raul Latino. The same type of memo which we gave to GMA when Abueva and I had the inclusive certified constitutional commission. It was a firm 50-man commission where we came up with all of these uh, provisions. The president, we gave it to the president, and the last time he talked to me in December was, Lito, I have already signed it. I have sent an executive order December 6th. But up to now, we have not yet uh, started. We have not, he has not yet appointed the 25-man commission. Instead of 15, we have only 25. But it's okay. But this is supposed, the 25-man commission is supposed to translate the mind of the president and tell the president, Mr. President, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, In a small group, in order to come up with something which is going to be presented eventually to Congress for the Constituent Assembly. The problem also is that Congress is very ahead. They have the Constitutional, they have now started to talk on amendments and the Constituent Assembly. However, the Senate under the, to the, the leadership of Coco, the Minter, or Pabarajo Pamantinian, has not yet really started on the uh, discussion of the Congress. So this is uh, just a uh, point uh, which I wanted to. See, in 1967, 68, 69, we started beginning to look into this. The, uh, the uh, federalizing process. But we thought, and then after a time, decided that it's going to be 11. Yang Kang Yang one. Yang Kang Yang suggestion. But you see,
But that is not our position. That is also as uh, Jonathan said, this is a suggestion by many. But you see the reason why we cannot come up with 11 is the federalizing process, we have our own version in the two series of five. Our version is simple. We let the provinces, municipalities, and cities negotiate with each other. And they put where they am, they impose one. Kaya ba dito, papayag na yun, kaya ang Sambuanga, kasama dito, or what, or separate, you know? Or like for example, Panay na lang. Panay will not work with the cross. Northern Luzon, the region one, will not work with Cordillera. So these are things which have to be considered. So we have a process there. The process is from 2022 to 2028 and beyond. All of this groups now who wants to become a future state would first go through what we call an autonomous territory. Autonomous territory. <clears throat> so the provinces, the governors, the provinces, the, the municipalities, the cities, we have to negotiate. What do you negotiate? First you negotiate, they call it ethnocentricity. First, magkakapret, you mga kind of group of contiguous area yan. You speak more or less the same language. You have to more or less the same culture. What do you negotiate? You negotiate the boundaries. You negotiate where the, uh, where the, the, where the, uh, the tower, the, the seat of provinces is, and then you negotiate also the world. So, so it is a negotiation process. <laughs> So after the negotiation process, when the autonomous goes through a uh, privacy, local privacy, then they become an uh, autonomous territory. So yung mga iiwa, may iiwa nyo. But yung iba, will uh, follow, uh, will become an uh, autonomous territory. So that if 60% of the territories will become autonomous, then we can declare uh, nito. Uh, you can declare uh, Republic of Philippine uh, Republic of Philippines. But more importantly, is I'd like to just touch a little, if I have still time. Huh? <laughs> so we need self determination. That's the important thing: self determination, autonomy, and subsidiarity in order for people to come together more of this. Well, what? Well, well, what this? You know, I have only 15 minutes, there are already one minute. They have already killed about five minutes of my time. <laughs> now, this is an important thing which we have to know first. There are preconditions for what revised in the Constitution. Number one is, come on. Political party before, we have that. In fact, we wrote that several years ago. We have a pending political party reform, which LP decided not to push. Because parliamentary system is parliamentary government. If you don't have a political party reform, next time, sinong manalo doon, mawala naman ang PDP, tuunan naman sila. So we have people who came from KBL today, tomorrow in LP, yesterday was NP. So these are, Anito, these are, we have to prevent that, okay? So, Arayana, penalized purpose reason. In Germany, we follow the German model. If you run for position and you transfer a year after, for a year after, you lose your position in Congress and you lose your position in the party. And there are transparent mechanisms which are very important, all the tax electoral reforms, and so on. So this is what we call polit professionalized political parties. And we came up also at the German model, a subsidy. For every vote you get, the government will give you, say, 20,000 or 20 pesos for every vote you get, which you can use 
all of political education in your campaign. So, as in Pobreca, you can run for an office if you are very good, and then the party, by law, will support you. You don't have to be a pakel to run. <laughs> so this is some, these are some pictures which only has a GDP, four pictures. Second is one political dynasty, we have the same. We came up with that several years back. And uh, uh, and it has to be self-executory. We cannot need Congress to do this because Congress is 85% owned, controlled by political dynasties. You do not expect Congress to destroy themselves. So it has to be self-executory. There is the process of information, the, the uh, freedom of information bill. Because if you don't have that, then you will have hundreds of Napoleons. You don't know what they're doing, see? So we have that. And the fourth is electoral reform, national electoral reform. So these are some of the preconditions, which we mean preconditions that if you don't have that and just go into federalism, you will have what we call the myth of federalism. It will fail, and we are going to be all frustrated. Salama sa inyo tarang. Thank you, sir. Our next discussant is the representative of Governor Cyrilis of the province of Davao, Sambuanga del Sur. We have been an SB member for more than 10 years and provincial board member for three terms, subject na ito sa federalism. Uh, currently, the president of the Philippine Councilors League of the province of Sambuanga, Luzor, and a, prior, uh, a graduate of the Ateneo de Sambuanga University. Let us welcome Honorable Miguelito Ocapa. Naghang salamat sir. Mayroong hapon. Last night, Governor Thomas Lewis asked me to represent him in this presentation. I told him, boss, ano bang sasabihin ko doon? You just follow my discussion and research on the presentation of the presenter. So ito po ko yan, lagi yung isunod po, kasi ito yung presentation ko. I'm very sorry, I am not, I am not prepared to present you a very written presentation on as far as our topic for today is concerned. Now, may I begin with the life blood joy? Kasi yung mga local government, Yung states, yung sinasabi natin ating country, ito walang pila, eh, wala yan. Kaya ng tao, kung walang lugo, patay. On the first place, when the issue of federalism has reached to our province, Governor Thomas Lewis asked the district revenue officer, how much is the revenue income for the province of Sambonga, New Sur? According to the Revenue District Officer, the income for the province of San Bogadiso coming from the internal revenue is more than 1.3 billion estimate for 2017. Comparing it to the era of our province, we are receiving 1.4 billion for 2017. If you have the revenue in San Bogadiso, it's your revenue more than 100 billion. Eh, ang mga sa balita, yung mga municipal mills sa Metro Manila has already signified their support to the federal system of government. Eh, talaga, susuporta sila. Kasi mayayaman sila ng mga local government. Maybe the income of Metro Manila is one-sixth of the budget of this country. Eh, how much lang yung budget ng Sambuanga Nisur? Eh, kaunti lang. Yung local income namin is only more than 100 million. Plus the era, eh, short pa yung 
income namin, kung kagamitan namin yung income for the province of support na rinso. Kaya kailangan namin yung local government code kasi kailangan namin ang internal revenue of the time. Yun yung position ng gobyerno namin. Eh, sasabihin natin na may equalization pa. Given that there is equalization pa, it is state na yan. Nandiyan na yung four elements of state. People, government, territory, sovereignty. Itong halimbawa yung ibang state. Oh, kung kailangan nyo ng pera, kailangan din namin. We will not give you our share. Kaya anong mangyari sa mga four regions, yung four provinces. Kaya hindi kami magka-deliver. Kaya ito kasi nga nangyari eh. Sa devolution, sabi ng Section 284, of the local government code. On the third year of the implementation of the local government code, 40% of the national revenue will go to the local government. Eh ano nangyari? Eh more than 25 years na. Eh hanggang ngayon, 17% na yung binigay ng national government. Eh anong nangyari? Binigay, devolution, Department of Health, eh yung iba binigay sa local government. Yung agriculture, binigay sa local government. Yung Social services, binigay sa local government. Yung sahib, binigay sa local government. Ang trabaho, binigay. Pero yung federal system of government. Eh ano ba yung federal system ng Amerika? Eh, they agree only of three. Uh, yung common. They have three common uh, goal. Eh ano yun? Defense, diplomacy, at saka money. Yung iba, federal state na yan. Eh kanina eh, ito kasi si Director Malaya eh, Tatlong misis na ako na rinig sa kanyang mga litsyo. Eh kanina, sabi niya, yung inisyari, yung national defense, sa kanyang foreign affairs, isa presidente. Eh yung iba, sa federal state. So additional money ngayon sa mga federal state. Eh anong mangyari sa mga local government? Eh yung rent niya. Eh paano kung walang pera? Paano kami makadeliver? Kami yung mga municipal officials, kami yung mga provincial officials, hindi kami magka-deliver, kami yung may magkasalanan. May magkasalanan. Magkasal so, ang um, position ng Governor Tomei Sirius, sabi niya, just follow my discussion in your presentation. Sabi niya, eh, I am open for the charge of change. Kung ano yung dapat alisin, alisin. Kung ano yung, ano yung dapat ilagay dyan, ilagay natin. Para peaceful uh, sa ano, sa development ng ating, ating bansa. So, sa ngayon, eh hindi ito about na 15 minutes, <laughs> wala akong prepared presentation eh. So, eh, ito kasi, itingan ko yung notes ko. Eh wala na eh, yun ang notes na, yun lang yun na, yun lang yun na, itingan ko eh, doon lang ko sa, <laughs> so, maraming salamat po, In time of Governor of the National Service, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Mabigat yun, kahit na hindi umabot ng 25 minutes. May I request the three resource persons, Sir Lito Lorenzana, Sir Jonathan Malaya, and Sir Miguelito Kapak. Sir, balik kayo din po. Please. Of course, alam naman ninyo yung ruling natin. Bago sila... So the floor now is open for the open forum. Anybody is... Now, we're on today to shield the first question or comment to the man in black at the front. Sir. My question is to Mr. Jonathan Malaya. You mentioned a while ago on the 40% proportional representation in the political parties. I just want to know what are those sectors that belong to the 40%. What are the breakdown of those 40%? Thank you.
Okay. Um, the proportional representation is uh, one of the ways to strengthen political parties. No? I think this is also the basis for the partidist system. But the partidist system, as in Athens, through several uh, decisions of the Supreme Court, have become bastardized. No? It is now met, uh, as of now, the, the partidist system now represents security guards, represents sectors. Na, you know, uh, are fairly complicated. So we're proposing the PR system. The PR system is a feature of many parliamentary systems in the world. No? Um, 60%, which is the current number of our members of parliament or congressmen, we have around uh, 238 congressmen. Hindi po natin kagalawin yung mga distrito nila. Okay? We are just going to add additional members, around 160 additional members of Congress, para maging 400. Now, they will be elected by political party, hindi po by sector, by political party. So the uh, voter now will vote two times. He will vote first for the party, no? which will, uh, and the more votes that uh, that party gets in the region, gets to represent that party in parliament. No? And then he votes for the district congressman or the district assemblyman representing the federal assembly. So these are not going to be sectoral parties, they will be mainstream political parties. No? So most probably it will be BDP Laban, Liberal Party, and the other mainstream political parties. And through this system, we strengthen the political parties, party uh, system in our country. And also, because we are going to shift to a parliamentary system, I think there will be more uh, integration of political parties. Most probably, po mawawala yung mga malit na partido at sasama na sila dun sa mga uh, established political parties. So this, although we are we are going to be a multi-party system because we cannot legislate a two-party system, no? it's impossible to do that. Magkaroon po ng maliwanag na distinction because in parliament, those who comprise the majority form the government. Those that comprise the minority form the opposition. Okay? So there will be clear delineation between political parties under the PR system. Okay, next. Sir, ano pa rin na? Then, sunod ka ma'am. Ah, uh, magandang hapon po. Still dun, dun ako sa yung process ng pag-take off ng federalism. By 22, uh, 2022 up to 2028. Ang inaalala ko pa rin po hanggang ngayon, people from Mindanao, especially from the, from the Moro province, ay yung peace process. Ano ba yung mangyayari? Ano ba yung... Do you think the, the, the Moro, uh, I mean the MIRF, the MNLF, uh, sa tingin mo kaya, sa tingin nyo kaya na makakahintay sila sa ganung uh, tagal ng proseso? Like for example, Don Miswari agreed on the, on, the, on, on the federalism. The MIRF proposed the BPL. Pero yung, yung the way you presented from Philippines and from the centuries, 2022 up to 2028, ang tagal na proseso po. Sir Minton, number one is, we have now a law, the BPL, which is being worked out of Congress, to separate it. The moment it will be passed, it will be passed. However, the moment the federal system is uh, finalized, a lot of those which have been already priorly agreed in the BDL will be put in effect. Mauna na yan, mauna na yan ng BDL. Except those which are, which cannot be uh, applied because of constitutional uh, inhibitions. But what has been already agreed in the peace process, what has been agreed already in the uh, negotiation, that stays. And then the moment it is passed into law, BBL, then continue yung one, autonomous, uh, uh, autonomous region. However, they have bigger powers, and more powers, expanded powers, and then when federalism at last is put into uh, play, then they get totally their, uh, what they ask for. So they don't really have to wait. They, in fact, 
the Bangsamoro will be the first autonomous territory. Sino ba una? That's why ang sigaw namin ngayon is, what is good for Bangsamoro? Is good for Bangsamisea? Is good for Bangsamoro? Is good for Bangsamoro? So ba una dapat ang dito, BBL? Okay, so ma'am, in maroon. Please, ano, mention your name muna, pero nag-document ka ngayon. Good afternoon po. Mandeline Herson po from the OCP, taxpayer. May naman yun. Partially, my question was answered. Supposedly, I should have raised my question in the earlier session, pero because of time. And then, partially answered by Sir Belen. Kaya lang, after the last and final session, which I thought would appease me, I only had an appreciation of the, how the, uh, the, uh, the infrastructure or the structure of federalism will, will, will start or commence. But Mr. Okapan again reinforced my anxiety and my uncertainty because of the unequal playing field on the ground. There will always be someone who will be left behind. My question is, have there been studies or countries, maybe see Dr. Manatin can also help in the process answer this, that they implemented federalism on a by phase basis so then those issues of inequality or the realities on the ground be ease out first or ma fine tune muna bago. Just the brothers from the the Muslim brothers have already expressed you and hindi yun may result until we see to it first that things are better off on the ground before we take off. Okay, sir? Yes. That's exactly why ma'am, we proposed the two-step process. Kasi you're saying there are a lot of uncertainties and there are a lot of things that have to be done. Totoo po yan. Kasi nga po, this is a restructuring. We have had a unitary system since Aguinaldo's time. And we're going to change this under Duterte. So it's not so easy to change a hundred years of unitary system. And all our laws are based on a unitary system. So when you were thinking about this, it would be so difficult for us to go through this suddenly. And we also learn from the experiences of the local government code, sir, di ba? Nung pinasay yung local government code noong 1991, walang transition. Agad binaba yung health, agriculture, I remember nakasuhat pa yata sila. Because they had no money to pay for the barangay health workers, sir, di ba? Barangay health workers. Because the national government did not give the money to pay for the new mandates of the under the local government code. So, ang inisip po namin, two-step process, regional commission muna, very lean, very lean, elected officials from the province and from the city will form a regional to regional body. And while they're doing that, Congress starts amending the laws, all of the laws that will affect the regions, from the internal revenue code and all of the other laws. And then, once they are ready, it will be the commission who will say, handa na kami. Then they prepare an organic act per region. Then it's submitted to Parliament for approval. Pag na-approvahan na po yun, then they can go federalism phase 2. Kaya po ginawa namin ganun. But of course, this does not apply to ARMM. Di ba po yun? That's why we're saying that the issue for ARMM will be subject to the peace agreement and to the signed agreements with the MIAMM. So whatever comes out of that will, get, will immediately be integrated into the federal system because asymmetric naman po tayo. Since asymmetric, we are open to special arrangements with special groups. That, so that is the, the approach. Can I also share? You know, sir, in our province, the initial to my other. We are the only local government unit that has a 400 feet capacity run by the provincial government. We have the one biggest sports facilities in province is almost 100 hectares complete with all sports facilities in local area. If we get 40% of 
Yung 1.3 billion namin, imagine 3 billion na yan. E kung gawin 60-40 in favor of the local government, e bakit kailangan pa natin yung federal system? E kaya mga tapot ang local government. Yung problema sa BBL, e yung kanina, yung sinabi ng first speaker, e surgical amendments of the Constitution to address the problem of the mga people. E yan yung, yan yung shortcut. Yan yung position ni Gugulaw. So sabi niya, sabihin mo yung mga discussion ko. Sinabi ko lang yun. So kay Gobyerno yun. Kay Gobyerno. Okay, next. Nauna si Sir yung mga kaputi. Then, ikaw sir, sunod ka sa inyo. Hello, good afternoon. Engineer Gugulaw from the Sabangga Peace and Security Forum. My name is Sherry. Terminology po regarding sa fiscal federalism kanina. My impression about the term of fiscal equalization, I would have preferred fiscal equity. Because if we say fiscal uh, equalization, even the abled ones can still get a share. Uh, or in fiscal equity, uh, the deserving ones will have a better share. And then, general context on the issue of federalism, uh, with the presentations that has done so far, one thing is is coming up in my realization, it is actually a very long process. And unfortunately, this is a political process, political exercise. No matter what form that we will introduce, in fact, we claim that even our former gover government form, even the unitary form of government, is perfect or near perfect in its nature. The very problem of this is actually the person running it. So I still would like my personal and uh, taxpayer's capacity I still would like to see an electoral reform first, so that people who will be running this country will still be the deserving ones. Okay, thank you. I think it's not a question, but it's more of a, uh, insights. So well taken and uh, recorded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jamal Amin from MRRD, NDCC, and PDP Laban. Uh, sir, the uh, question to Isa, why it takes uh, up to 2028 ang uh, uh, ano yung transition no? mga yung uh, evolve since even the 1987 constitution it took laban is a, is a strong uh, political party no? no? and the people are really uh, supportive with the federal system no? so bakit natin ipatatagalin yun lang po Thank you very much for that. This is just a process. Put out the casino, people must understand. You have to negotiate, you have to go through the process. So, I'm going to tell you, 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 I'm going to tell you. So, this is, we have a new way of working it out. Because you see, this is a paradigm shift, a total shift, in fact, from unitary, to federal, something which is totally different. And there are so many laws in between which have to be changed by Congress, and then Congress in a, is not a stamping part of Duterte. They have their own minds. Do you think that when you say, oh, na ni, oh, na na? Of course not. So you have to go through a process, and the process takes time. So in our position, it may be, maybe, 2022 to 2028. In Spain, for example, it takes them about 30, 40 years before they were able to, uh, to completely federalize. There are other, Portugal, there are other European countries that took them decades. Now we have not even started yet. So it doesn't really matter. The point is that you have to do it well or do not do it at all. Okay, so... I see you, sir. I agree with Sir Lito, no? As mentioned before, ito pong gagawin natin is not just the future, our future, it's the future of our children and our grandchildren. Bakit po na madaligin natin? Kasi baka magkamali tayo. So, although hindi naman po ganang nagagal, as soon as the as soon as the Constitution is approved, the amendments, immediately we become a federal republic. By that meaning, kaagad, mandated ang Congress, ang Parliament, to pass a new local government code to supplant the existing one. 
Okay, doon na masusolusyonan yung problema ng mga sambuang detektsur na baka mamaya kapusin sila ng pondo. Kailangan, parliament must allocate the necessary funds for the transfer following the uh, precepts of the new constitution. Ngayon po, immediately after the passage of the Regional Local Government Code, we create the Regional Commission. Federalism na po kaagad yun. Federalism na yun. Because magkakaroon ka ng regional governments. No? Phase 1 nga lang. As mentioned, para incremental yung federalism natin. Then, after 5 or 10 years, if a certain region decides to, you know, we don't like the Regional Commission, we would like a directly elected regional governor, then they can they can do so. They will have they will have they will have to prepare their organic act. So kagad kagad po may federalism hindi po kadalang katagal. Ang sinasabi lang ng matagal is the phase two because it will it will take some time. Yun. Dun lang po sa point na tao pa na magpapatakbo ng totoo po yun. Tao pa rin na magpapatakbo. And federalism if not used properly. Hindi po ma hindi po hindi po mai-enjoy yung full benefits ng federalism kung yung mga leaders natin eh hindi magagaling. That's it. But federalism is only a system of government. It cannot change men. But federalism as a structure can affect the behavior of politicians. Especially po kung ipasa natin yung political dynasty as part of the constitution. Wala nang magagawa ang mga politiko, they will be prohibited from running. If meron na silang kamag-anak, kung yung tatay nila mayor na, effectively, they will be prohibited from running for counselor. Again, you change behavior by changing the structure. Parang po yung nangyari yan sa Subic. Pag kinuhuli yung mga uh, motorista at pinapatupad ng patas yung tama, nagsumusunod naman po ang uh, taong bayan. So long as you change the... We only be implemented on the level of the region in the international. Hindi po. Yung magka-craft po ng regional and local government code will be parliament. National government po ang gagawa niyan. Okay? Ang gagawa po ng organic act kayo. Ngunit, isasubmit niyo po yun sa parliament for approval. Okay? okay. Para po hindi, 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 para po hindi uh, pa-iba-iba pa ang sistema from one region to the other. Kasi sa mamaya, sa isang region, ang term of office ng mayor, three years, Doon sa kabila, ginawang five years. Diba? They can do that if we allow them, if they have craft their organic act by themselves. But kung ipapasa nila yan sa parliament, maki-check sila doon. Okay, ngayon, Gob. Okay, sir, kaya naman. Good afternoon. Uh, Herbie Bo from Central Mindanao University. Uh, Province Bukitan, uh, Professor of Political Science. I would like to address my uh, simple question to Sir Malaya. Although I would like to just give also some few cents worth to my idea that uh, federalism is simply about the relationship between the local government and the national government. That we discussed also, Sir Malaya discussed also about it shift from presidential to parliamentary system. It is about the relationship between the executive and the legislative branches of government. In the presidential, it's always uh, characterized by a separation of powers and checks and balances. The parliamentary system is always characterized by fusion of power insofar as the executive and the legislative branches of government is concerned. And there was also the mentioning of PR system, which is about a change also in our electoral system from the single member district plurality or the first past the post system to proportional representation system. Although I, I believe in this PR system because uh, accordingly, one way by which we could measure the health of a democracy is on the turnout of voters in an election. In PR system, which is adopted by most countries in Europe, they are at 80 to 90 percent voter turnout, whereas the SMDP is normally at 50 to 60 percent. 
So, yung change talaga, sir, that we've been talking now is really a, a complex change. It's not only federalism, but the parliamentary and the electoral system. My question now, sir, is are we ready in terms of the political maturity of the people and also if it is attuned to our political tradition? Okay, thank you, Pope, sir. Okay. Ganito po kasi, sir, no? 1987 pa yung ating constitution. Hanggang ngayon, ni isang letra, hindi pa napapalitan. And all of us know that uh, there is no perfect document. And that the, the 87 constitution, even the members of the constitutional commission themselves, they admit that minadali yung paggawa ng constitution na yun. And that constitution was a very strong reaction to the uh, martial rule of uh, President Marcos. So it is no longer attuned to the present time. So it's about time that we make the necessary changes. Kung sana po, nakapag, kung nakapag uh, amend tayo pa unti-unti, na inalaw ng uh, like si Presidente Pinoy, sana inalaw na yung mga maliliit na pagbabago, hindi tayo mag-uhul siya change na yun. Unfortunately, we, this is now the only time na meron po tayo. Kasi po, si President Duterte is the only president from Mindanao. He is the only one who has this frame of mind of dismantling the unitary system. Karamihan po ng mapangulo natin love the unitary system because they're from Luzon and they have perfected the political patronage, the political system, and the money under the control of the president. Wala po tayong pangulo na gustong mawala yung poder na yun. Only President Duterte. Therefore, meron tayong napakaliit na opportunity to produce this change. Kahit po ayaw sana natin na medyo magmaluwag masyado yung pagbabago kasi medyo nakakatakot, pag hindi po natin ginawa, within the first three years of President Duterte's term, wala na po ito. Wala na po ito. Maniwala po kayo sa akin. But this change will not happen. Only a president from Mindanao and, uh, and can propose this. A president from Luzon will never propose this. <laughs> because this, uh, this goes against the grain of Imperial Manila. Sila yung Imperial Manila. So, opportunity, opportunity na po natin to. Ang tanong po, will we elect a Duterte again? So, if, if we, if since wala kasiguruhan, we should take this opportunity now. And all of the important changes we must do, ilagay na natin. Tanong, are we ready? Political maturity? Ang sagot ko po dyan, kung hindi na yun, eh. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So, magplibisito na tayo. <laughs> but they could uh, still accommodate the... the yep, say, ano? Oh. Sige, sir. Ikaw muna din si Ma'am. Uh, I'd like to take uh, yung statement ni Professor Malaya. Kung hindi ngayon, kailan pa? Meaning, I share yung yung nagmamadali tayo. Kailangan na ngayon. Kasi nandiyan ang Presidente na may political will. Lahat ng yung pwede natin mangyari I agree, 100%. Siya lang ang Presidente, may political will. Political will. At saka siya lang ang Presidente, pwede nang sabi. Hindi yan. So, mag-plebisito na tayo. Now, ito ang situation. During martial law, during martial law, President Marcos... Ah, martial law din ngayon? Hindi, ito martial law ngayon. Yung martial law ni President Marcos. He issued Presidential Decree Number 1083, creating the two regional autonomous governments, another tier of government in, some, in, in Mindanao to address the clamor of the people to shift to a new So, what's your answer? Immediately implement that then? No, 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 no. Nah, kau, pakai macam mana? Oh, pakai tang bisaya sambil angusan, dekung sampai tukul sampai terlalu simula. Tapi orang, di to, di to mengata angusan pukul tadi to maksabi sambil. Tidak kamu semua itu, bukan? So, bila nak buat, dapat simula ni lah, don. 
actually I suggested it to the BTC, no? the selection of the chief minister. And uh, one of the problem is that, o nga, no, palagi nasa Luzon ng presidente natin. The most likely scenario, once we have a uh, federal system and the prime minister, will be dominated by Luzon also. Because my assumption and what the BTC did is to have a majority voting. So 50 plus, uh, 50 plus 1, those who get it become the prime minister or chief minister. Now, there will be horse trading, no? Uh, that's the main problem. No, sige, ilik mo ako, gagawin kita. What they did is actually, the suggestion is to uh, make a preferential track voting. So each minister or uh, uh, member of the Federal Assembly will have to vote three people. Rank them in terms of preference. That way, walang division eh. Kasi uh, ang issue sa BTC, yung election ng chief minister, if you don't vote against me, I'm a maginda uh, you are against me. So, pero if you have a rank preference, you can vote three people and rank them based on your preference. Your sense of divisiveness that you didn't vote against me, therefore you are against, uh, you are not uh, with me, no? Made you mami minimize yun. So, my suggestion actually is, why don't you look into this uh, system of voting that has been adopted in many countries around the world on how to select a uh, minister? And this is what they call the preferential black okay. voting. Yes, sir? What country has uh, Asuka? Uh, what country? Uh, Australia, sir. Uh, even in the US and some part of the No, no, there is no, there is no separation of the voting one, two, three. Basically, what is very important is it is not true that Luzon can dominate because when the political parties already uh, operate as one, the, all, the whole political party is based on membership of all from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So in the federal system, when we have a parliament, there is no dominance anymore of a central government. There is only dominance when you have a unitary system where authority and responsibility resides in the center. Okay? Therefore, in the voting process, when it comes to party voting, it has been done in Germany, it has been done all over the country. All you have to do is come up with the type of political party reform act that is very important. Well, you have, because first of all is that we don't have a real political party now. Okay? You can jump from one to the other. Ideologically, a party is supposed to aggregate the aspirations of people. When you have ideological perspectives, the difference in ideology, you have members, and more importantly, you have a program of government which is acceptable to all. Okay, so gusto ko sana natin i-accommodate yung mga tanong ninyo but not anymore in the plenary. You can write those questions and uh, have that submitted to the Secretariat and we will, we will uh, send that to whoever you would like to respond to. Um, may I call um, our very own Secretary, Secretary Luntok, to present the together with Dr. Montano and Dr. Sinoso to present the certificate of uh, appreciation to our resource persons. Um, Certificate of Appreciation is given to Mr. Jonathan Malaya for imparting his knowledge and expertise as a resource person during the third Mindanao Policy Research Forum on Federalism, uh, held on September 7, 2017, at ADSO, Sampuaga City. Signed, Dr. Yanto, signed, Dr. Alonto, and Dr. Father San Juan. Uh, also to Mr. Lito Monico Lorenzana and uh, Mr. Miguelito Ocapa. Uh, may I request 
for a round of applause to our uh, presenter. Thank you very much.